video we will talk about painting red with watercolor. I will be painting this beautiful still life where we see various shades of red and obviously red is a primary color so we can't mix it but we can take one pigment in my case it will be anthracrinoid red by Daniel Smith and using just this one pigment I will be painting the whole variety of reds that we see in this reference photo. I'm going to start with my lightest areas. My paper is dry I only applied some clean water to certain objects, to those two bowls and to the glass of wine. And it's necessary so that the pigment doesn't soak into the paper too much because I want to work with very light shades for now. So like I said, in the still life, the object color is mostly red. I have red strawberries, red wine, red roses. But if we look at those objects closely, we will see that in the light, that red will be a lot warmer and uh, in the shadow, it will be a lot cooler. The pigment that I'm using, anthraquinoid red, it's on the cool side, but I would say it's kind of medium red pigment. And by mixing it with various yellows and oranges, I will make it warmer. And by mixing it with blue, and maybe even some greens I will make it cooler or I will neutralize it I will achieve a more neutral shade the main advantage of this pigment the reason I decided to make the special video about it is that it's transparent a lot of red pigments like cadmium reds for example various shades they are kind of semi-transparent they still work obviously they can be also mixed to achieve various shades but white paper is not going to show through them as easily so it will be harder to achieve luminosity of the painting when you paint in layers so my first pass doesn't look like much it's just the beginning i painted some of the reflections on those white balls and i started working on the glass of wine i also painted the reflections on the glass and I laid the first layer for the wine. This area will be pretty saturated, so it will require a lot of pigment. This will be a layered watercolor. I will not be painting a La Prima. I will apply quite a few layers all over my painting. And that's why it's so important to have transparent pigments. So because the more you layer semi-transparent pigments or semi-opaque pigments or opaque pigments, obviously, you will lose that feeling of the depth of space of air that we value in watercolor painting so i'm working on the wine in the glass and you will see what i was talking about earlier i applied a layer of uh, anthraquinoid red and then into that i am mixing various other colors scarlet lake windsor yellow deep for the lit areas for the warmer areas and also phthalo blue and ultramarine blue for the cool areas and when those blues mix with anthraquinoid red which is a kind of medium on the cool side of red i achieved that beautiful purple color that wine has in the shadow painting glass objects can be a bit tricky we just have to really carefully look at our reference photo and not be afraid to lift color if we apply too much like i'm doing right now that's how you create the effect of those reflections on the glass and also it's a good idea to go a little bit lighter you know on the glass because obviously it doesn't have color it just reflects what's around it so we need to have a light touch when we work on the glass and if you watch the video to the end you will see that i will be using a little bit of white gouache to add some highlights to my painting if you watched my videos in many of them I use white gouache instead of masking my painting first to add the highlights to my paintings. Okay, let's move on to strawberries. And again, I am using the same pigment in combination with some yellow to make it warmer and for those roses that are on the table they're deep kind of bordeaux color so i'm going to use anthraquinoid red in mixing it with tallow blue for the shadow areas
The strawberries in the foreground will be even warmer because objects that are closer to us will be warmer than the ones that are far away, even in still life. It's good to have that distinction. So I'm using quite a bit more yellow to mix with my red. That's how I achieve the variety of color. I achieve the variety of tone by applying more pigment or more water. For lighter areas, I apply more water or I lift the pigment if I already applied it. And for darker areas, I use more saturated pigment. I'm not mixing in any blacks or anything like that. It's all achieved by varying the proportion of um, water and pigment on my brush. dropping in some blue in the shadow areas where those strawberries touch each other and I'm leaving little spaces to paint the leaves later. Working with the same pigment like this all over the painting really unifies it because the viewer's eye kind of um, starts moving around the painting and you keep viewer's eye on your painting so the painting looks really harmonious and balanced while if we use one pigment in one area and something different in another area that can unbalance our painting and we will not achieve harmony that we're looking for in our art. And I'm also varying my greens. When I work on the leaves of those roses, I use cascade green and also a sap green deep because those leaves are turned towards the light at various angles. They're not going to be all the same. So we need to have some variety there as well. And I'm going to use my Antriquinoid Red even for the leaves. When I mix it with cascade green, it's a very cool green color. Mixed with red, it creates a very nice deep purple because there is so much blue in, in that uh, cascade green and that works great for my paintings. So I will be using that mixture for my darks as well. Okay, I had some paint run over on that white bowl. I'm going to clean it up a little bit with my stiff brush and clean water and maybe lift even more highlights on the wine glass before I continue working on my painting. It's important to really look at your reference photo, especially if you don't have a huge amount of experience painting, because the more you look at it, the more you see all different nuances in it that you never noticed before. And you will see all those very subtle color variations in red and you will be able to capture them accurately in your painting. Okay, I think my first layer looks pretty good. It dried. So now I'm going to work on the texture of the, on the strawberries. The difficulty of painting strawberries is that the seeds are lighter than the berry itself. So we have to kind of paint around them to make them look realistic. Of course, I'm not going to paint every single seed. I am not a hyper-realistic painter, but in the lit areas of each strawberry, I do want to create a little bit of texture. That's why I'm using a small brush and I'm kind of trying to paint around those areas to create the illusion of those little seeds on each berry. And we need to also deepen the shadows between the berries as well, which I'm doing with my phthalo blue. Painting a complicated still life like this it requires quite a bit of patience. You know, we can't use a big brush, we can't use wide washes of color, but I think it still can be fun and the result can look really beautiful. You know, it, it really has that wow factor when people see all the details in your painting. So we just need to be patient and work on all the details and really carefully look at our reference photo and try to capture all the details as accurately as we can. And I'm adding yellow to the strawberries because I want those lit areas on them to be even warmer. And you don't have to necessarily mix the right color, exactly the right shade from the beginning. 
you can use glazing. You can add a layer of watercolor. If your layers remain transparent and sufficiently light, you can always make adjustments and add a little glazing layer on top of what you already have on paper. And I want to warm up the wine in the glass as well, so I'm using a combination of Scarlet Lake and um, Windsor Red, which is a cadmium red. So you see, even though they're all reds, they look quite drastically different in that glass, and that's what creates the illusion of depth of space and volume. Okay, all our subjects are in place, so we can work on the background. I'm going to make it really dark and saturated. I'm using phthalo blue in combination with other staining pigments, and I'm using a flat brush. It really helps me to paint around my subjects with precision, and I'm dropping also cascade green and uh, mineral violet into that phthalo blue. I think I need to use a bigger brush when I don't need uh, to paint those small areas. I also want to mix some of that Windsor Red because, as we know, green and red are complementary colors. They will neutralize each other and we will have very deep, dark color without using any black pigment. I have several videos on painting blacks with watercolor. You can achieve really interesting deep darks with watercolor by mixing complementary pigments. I will leave you some links in the description to this video and also in the cards so you can check out a few more examples of painting darks by mixing various watercolor pigments. Flat brush is also essential for picking up a lot of pigment and I think even though it looks quite dark right now my background I will need maybe another layer because it will lighten when it dries. But you see that dark background really brings to life my white objects in the still life. Okay, I am going to work on the tablecloth. I'm going to just mark some lines with a ruler and watercolor pencil because I don't want to mess them up. I don't want my perspective to be off while I'm painting. So I'm just going to have a few guiding lines there. The still life is set outside so the sky will be reflecting in the tablecloth so that red is not going to be super warm. It's going to be kind of on the cool side. And to create the illusion that those bowls are glazed and shiny, I'm going to paint tablecloth reflected in those bowls with the appropriate distortion. The bowls needed a little adjustment too, even though they're white, they will obviously have some shaded areas, which I am adding right now with a very light shade of cobalt blue, and I also mix it with my red. I know a lot of people wonder how to paint white with watercolor, and I think to paint it successfully you really need to have contrast, because, you know, you paint on white paper, 
so if you don't have something offsetting that wide it's just not going to be as dramatic and as noticeable as you know with a dark background that I have right now for example my wine glass the wine lightened of course watercolor lightens when it dries and it looks too similar to those strawberries so I'm going to add a little depth with some blues you know the wine is red but it's a cool red so it has a lot of blue in it so a glazing of blue I need to work on those roses a little more I'm not happy with them at all they kind of look like just blobs so they need a little definition I over darken them a little bit but I'll fix that in a second let's so work on the leaves for now adding the veins and the details since I'm going for a um, pretty detailed realistic style the same level of detail needs to be throughout the painting The strawberries in the other bowl need some detail as well and I'm using the same technique I'm kind of trying to paint around the seeds because the seeds are lighter than the berry itself not going crazy on the details but um, just some work with a small dagger brush done they're in good shape now I need to paint some cast shadows I usually paint cast shadows even if I can't see them very clearly in the reference photo I still kind of invent them <laughs> I think it just looks better when the objects are not standing on a flat surface but there is some some shadow you know some variation in tone there okay these last steps were almost done just generally balancing everything adding just a few dark details and my last step will be adding highlights which like I said I'm doing with artist gouache the brand is M Graham and I'm only using titanium white for the highlights so we're going to add highlights on the strawberries they're very glossy and shiny so the highlights will be very pronounced I can also make very small corrections on those white balls where the watercolor ran over a little bit Again, I'm not repainting things, I'm just correcting my edges with white gouache. Correct the other bowl. And very important, on the wine glass, the highlights will be very pronounced. You know, the surface of the glass is very smooth, so the light will really bounce off of it. And just a few well-placed highlights will make all the difference, creating the illusion of glass. If you try this technique, let me know in comments if it worked out for you. And also let me know which pigment you used as the base, uh, which red. I'm looking to expand my palette. I will appreciate your recommendations. I'm looking for nice transparent reds. So let me know which ones you have and which ones you tried. And my painting is done. I made one adjustment off camera. I lowered the edge of the table. So here is the final result. I hope this video convinced you that we can paint a variety of reds with just one pigment, mixing it with other colors that we already have on our palette. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video here on Tamirap Studios channel.